Hello and welcome. I'm Simon, and this will be a multi-part series about mycotoxins. For the first part of this series, which will be today, we will be looking at the definition of mycotoxins, a little bit of the history, and just kind of an overview of what they are and why we care about them. So first of all, defining mycotoxins is a bit confusing, so I'm going to work through it here. Mycotoxin. So myco is the first part of the word mycotoxin, and it's derived from the Greek word myket, I think. Not up to date on my Greek pronunciations, but it means mushroom or slimy or something kind of like this. Um, so the first part of this word is commonly used in the field of um, fungal research and mushrooms in words kind of like mycology, which is the biology of fungi. Um, a mycophagist is somebody who eats mushrooms. Um, this could be most of us, or it could be somebody who's actually, you know, that's their hobby is to go out and find mushrooms and eat them. Um, or mycorrhiza. So this is, um, most people see a mushroom and they think that's the whole part of the organism, but it's actually not. Mushroom is just the fruiting body that sticks up out of the ground, and there's a whole network of fungus that's underground, usually associated with roots of some sort of plant. The second part of the word toxin from mycotoxin, um, most people know what a toxin is, a poisonous substance. Um, what most people don't know is that a toxin is actually a natural occurring, naturally occurring substance um, versus something like a toxicant. Um, maybe something that is like PFAS that I talk about in my other series, that's not natural. So it's technically not a toxin. A toxin would be like a poison, um, something like venom or uh, you know, poison ivy might have toxins in it. Um, so mycotoxin, both parts of this word put together, we have a fungal, a poisonous fungal substance. Um, and then adding a little more to that definition, um, poisonous to vertebrates. Um, that doesn't really you know, have to do with the, the word there, uh, but it does have to do with the overall definition of mycotoxins. Um, so this is an example of some mold growing on corn. That may be a source of our mycotoxins because um, we have a fungus, which is mold, making something that's toxic. So to start, I'm going to go way back to Lewis Carroll and Alice in Wonderland because um, if you think of Alice when she's talking to that hookah smoking caterpillar um, and those little mushrooms that she saw and the mushroom that would make her grow in size bigger or smaller um, you think of mycotoxin right a fungal toxin and you think oh maybe these mushrooms like Alice had um, such as this this uh, such as this Amanita muscaria. Um, this has natural toxins in it that will cause hallucinations. It won't really cause you to get bigger or smaller like Alice in Wonderland or like Mario, um, but it can cause some other effects, including a lot of toxicity. These can definitely be deadly. So is that a mycotoxin? Nine, it is not a mycotoxin, not at all. Um, why is it not a mycotoxin? That is unclear. It is a fungal toxin, um, but really when we talk about mycotoxins, we're talking about um, compounds that come more from molds um, and that are present in our foods and not necessarily something that a fungus like a mushroom makes. Um, so that's important to know with this definition. Second, you might think, okay, what's a toxin that's produced by something like yeast, which is a fungus? Um, Maybe alcohol is a very common toxin produced by yeast, um, one that we have in drinks, such as this um, delicious Pappy Van Winkle bourbon, very expensive bourbon there. Um, so what about ethanol? Is that a mycotoxin? It is a fungal toxin. Um, nine, it is not. No toxin. Um, Again, it's a little confusing about this definition. We have a fungal toxin, but again, it's not really fitting the bill um, of our class of mycotoxins because in general, they're on molds. Okay, so uh, example three. We definitely have something that looks like a mold here. So we're getting maybe closer to a true definition. Um, that compound, if you don't recognize it, is penicillin. And this is actually um, penicillium mold where it was um, identified. So we have a compound. Um, that is toxic. Penicillin, although we use it as an antibiotic, it is quite toxic and can be quite deadly. Um, so is this a mycotoxin? Technically, no, nine. Um, I actually think it is a mycotoxin, but when you classify mycotoxins, list off the classes, penicillin is never listed. Uh, maybe because it has purposes as a pharmaceutical, um, as an antibiotic. Again, this is unclear and confusing. If I had a good explanation, I'd give it to you. 
So what is a mycotoxin? Hopefully, <laughs> apparently all I've done so far is confused you, but that's okay because it is a bit confusing. So mycotoxins are all fungal toxins, but all fungal toxins are not mycotoxins. So the three examples I just went through, the uh, Alice in Wonderland, Amanita muscaria, and the uh, ethanol, and the penicillin, um, those are all fungal toxins, but they're not necessarily mycotoxins. There is a great review out there that I use to gather all the information for this whole multi-part series. I highly recommend it. Um, it's by Joan Bennett, who is at Tulane and now is at Rutgers, I think. Um, and this is, uh, it tells a great story of these different classes of mycotoxins and the classification, uh, toxicology. It, it very much sums up the field. Um, it's a little, uh, older 2003 so there's been some updates since then but a lot of what is stated in this review is held true um, and there's there's some new field to add on to it but not a whole lot so back to our definition mycotoxins are all toxic in some way to vertebrates okay that's in part of the word that of toxins mycotoxins are all small molecules this is an interesting part um, because we're not talking about things like proteins. Um, we're not talking about um, large molecules here. We're talking about small molecules that would resemble drugs or resemble um, uh, environmental contaminants. And mycotoxins are all made by fungus. We've kind of established that. So when you go through all three of those, you add one more key point that they're commonly produced by molds associated with food or in your living spaces. So you can have some, um, some molds that produce mycotoxins that might be in your house, that you're breathing in their spores, that, that those are technically some mycotoxins. Um, this might be on your food and grains, that's where we see it. So I'm gonna go through a few examples of common classes of mycotoxins. First of all, um, alphabetically and probably most common and most important to human health, we have aflatoxins. Aflatoxins are the reason, if you've heard about peanut butter recalls, such as the recall of Peter, Peter, uh, Peter Pan peanut butter, um, this is a very toxic compound, both acutely and chronic, and in a further episode, I'm gonna go into all the details about aflatoxin toxicity. Um, Another one, citrinins, these are commonly found on rice. Uh, Fumonisins, commonly found in corn. And what you're seeing, these are all associated with some food products, and they're all kind of secondary metabolites, and they're all contaminants that could be toxic to either humans or animals eating them. Um, ochre toxins as well, which you would think would might come from okra, but it does not come from okra, it comes from other things, including grains and corn. And then there's many, many other classes of mycotoxins um, from the ergot alkaloids um, to a bunch of them that I have never heard of, um, including hundreds of subclasses and, you know, aflatoxin B1, 2, 3, 4. There's all kinds of different ones. Um, so learning them all is not too important, but knowing general specifics about these, knowing where they come from, um, what they can do to you is very important. Um, and it's very important in protecting our food supply since these are most... Um, closely associated with food. So that's the end of the part one of mycotoxins saying, what are mycotoxins? Um, in the further episodes, we'll go into things like the toxicity and I recommend you join those. Today's episode was just to give that basic overview and define, um, just so you're not thinking later, what about ethanol? Ethanol is a mycotoxin, but it's not a mycotoxin because the definition's weird. Um, thanks for joining and I look forward to seeing you at the next episode.